Historically, construction has really been underserved by technology. And not to a fault of their own. Um, it's really, there hasn't been technology that's targeted to solve their problem specifically. Two and a half million people employed in the industry. Almost a million of those people self-employed. It's that stretch, that spectrum, I suppose, that gives us the biggest challenge. How do we get everybody into a place where, where you can make the most effective use of technology? As technology is evolving hugely, especially in the, in the construction industry, the usage of the same content has changed. So we don't want it in paper anymore. We would like to use it digitally. Is the way that they respond to a request for information truly their competitive advantage? Is the color that they use to comment on a drawing truly what sets them apart from the competition? And the answer that they're coming to together when they look at each other and their progress is no. This is not how we should be competing. When we think about technology for construction, it doesn't necessarily have to be the big shiny object. AR, VR, leveraging point cloud data, imagery from drones, all of these things are really exciting and it's absolutely the way that we're going. However, construction needs something incredibly practical that they can implement and use now. And the reason for that is, as they're, they're kind of the air traffic controller of information, if you will. The designer is creating this, all this design information. The contractor has to then receive that information and disseminate it to subcontractors who are working in the field. Those subcontractors working in the field are experts at what they do, which doesn't necessarily mean they're experts at technology. So they have to take sometimes very complex data-rich information and be able to share it in ways that are easy to consume, easy to work with. So PDF just became this natural, interoperable file format that was easy to consume. Now that we're all becoming digital, it means we actually need to come to consensus and standardize quickly in order to make sure that the digital technology that we're investing in can work at its best capacity. So things like machine readable documents or automating processes, those technological advances need a little bit of standardization so that the computer can do the work. So seeing the contractors come together to really define what their competitive advantage is, let the tech do the repetitive work, but it's how they bring that project to life, how they solve problems, the talent they have on the job site, the craftsmen who are actually building. Those are the things that they should be focusing on and this effort is allowing them to do that. You know, we've, we've all seen the, the charts, you know, the last 20 odd years um, productivity in UK construction hasn't really shifted um, and there are all sorts of reasons for that. Lack of investment in technology in, in a meaningful way is, is one of them. So, so if we can collaborate around standards that help us improve that productivity uh, by taking out the, the inefficiency then that's, that's going to that's gonna help us be a more successful industry. Without getting too kind of over ambitious about it, I, I think it's it's part of the answer to the productivity problem. It was about 2013, and one of our customers had just finished his first fully paperless project, and he was starting to ramp up his next project, and he quickly realized oh my god, I'm starting from scratch again. He had all these workflows in place, the technology in place, everything that is required to do a paperless project wasn't in place. There was no standards around it. He had to start the conversations over. So he actually reached out to us and said, hey, I'd like your help to pull together as many general contractors and designers as we can to talk about creating a PDF standard. At that point in time, we each called everybody we knew and we were able to get a group of general contractors together. Those general contractors then um, sat around the table and said, okay, what problems are you having when designers create PDFs for you? And they came up with five really simple things. And it, it was things along the lines of using a true type font, consistent line styles, consistent naming convention, consistent placement of the drawing on the actual physical PDF page. These are things that in, in their mind would make a world of difference, um, but just weren't being communicated or requested by the designer. They then said, well, now we need the truth. We need the designer to come in and validate it and tell us where we're 
where we're 100% spot on and where we're dreaming. And so it was actually at our Extreme Conference um, in Los Angeles that I've helped facilitate the designers sitting across the table from the contractors. I didn't realize how much they do not know about each other's world until we sat through that meeting and went through all the designers comments on their requested five things. From a human perspective, it was interesting to watch because the contractor said, we just need you to use this type of hatch fill. That's it. And then the designer essentially would say, well, that hatch fill is my expression. It's, it's how I express the intent, the materials. And it was very precious to the designer and the contractor had no sense of the preciousness of it. But what the reason why it mattered to the contractor was if they were creating a hatch fill that was 16 line segments in one line, that takes a lot of time to render on a phone or on a tablet. And when they're sending it out to the field, they're one of the lowest tolerances or lowest patience individuals on the planet. So they knew that seconds matter. So when they talked to the contractor, the contractor talked to the designer about these hatch fills, they said, well, I understand that, but instead of doing 16 line segments, can you just have one line segment that creates a zigzag? Yeah, I can do that, easy. Problem solved. Now, if the designer's creating that content, in an efficient way that a machine can read, it can render, it can do all the things it's supposed to do quickly. Now all of a sudden, all these stumbling blocks that are in the contractor's path to progress are being removed. And seeing the fact that each just didn't understand or didn't know each other's world, and it just took a conversation, was really eye-opening for me. It's not about the technology. It's about what the individuals can do with the technology and how it's changing the way they view each other. And for technology to help humans build trust is kind of a magical thing. Um, but it, it was a struggle to get individuals to see that and to understand what was at the heart of the intention of the standards. So today where the Construction Progress Coalition uh, is at is much further along than where we were in 2013, 2015. The PDF guidelines is about to go through its V2 or version 2 iteration. Um, the organization has become a non-profit organization and they've moved on to new projects. When the Construction Progress Coalition really started to gain momentum, um, obviously I was sharing the news internally within Bluebeam. Uh, and we have a user conference out in Sweden and our customers were presenting their workflows at the conference. We got approached uh, by a competitor colleague of ours who uh, told us that uh, he was uh, inspired by the talk that me and my colleague Emil did at the conference the year before. As we, we started talking, the, we started to share. We came in to the topic of, of design review. He, he asked us, do you guys have a, a standard for design review? And we say, yeah, we have one, but it's Skanska specific. And we, we asked the same question back, do, do you guys have one? And it's like, yeah, yeah, we do, but it's NCC specific. So, okay, so we started to talk about, okay, what, what do you guys do with Bluebeam when you do design review? And, uh, and all the things he sort of <laughs> threw at us was like, check, 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 we do that as well, check. And then when we were sort of finished, it was like, okay, how do you guys do design review? It was like, yeah, almost exactly the same way as you do. And they very quickly realized things that they had considered to be their competitive advantage were really just administrative tasks and that they the whole time had been holding these processes kind of holding the cards to their chest of this is how we do our work they very quickly realized what most of us as technology vendors learn quickly is you all do it pretty much the same with slight variations and so they decided to come together and say, well, if we're doing this work similarly, why don't we come together to create standards? In Skanska, Sweden, we, we have uh, almost 100,000 subcontractors going in and out of our projects on a yearly basis. Uh, and those subcontractors also move around on other, how do you say, competitors uh, job sites as well. So we said, okay, let's let's try to see if we can standardize this to uh, to eliminate confusion, uh, save time, help each other 
train, it, it sort of becomes a, a ecosystem. Once somebody has been touched by it, <laughs> it it's, it's, it's there. And when they, when they come around, it's okay, we don't have to, we don't have to train you in, in a specific way. We, 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 we do the exact same thing, so that means that they can start working from yeah, second one. And so I hopped on a plane and in January of 2017 I went out to our office in Stockholm, Kista specifically, and met with the contractors. And for two hours they just talked about all the standards they were creating, the problems they were trying to overcome, and how they were going to solve it. And then they got to this one bit about um, but we need a standard for how the PDFs are created so that they're machine readable. And that's where I was able to say, aha, have something for you you may want to use. The US already started it. And so I walked through the guidelines with them and they said, this is exactly what we needed. Um, we'd love to trans translate it into Swedish and localize it. And we said, absolutely, go for it. And so that's how that spark that was lit kind of took wind and caught over in Sweden to give them their, their guidelines. We understood that we couldn't do this ourselves, uh, so uh, we needed to ask around uh, to see if anybody else uh, would like to join in to, the, to that first initial conversation. No standard has been created yet, just come and talk with us, communicate. We actually got Skanska uh, NCC, PIAB, Veidek and JM, who are the five biggest contractors in, in, in Sweden, and then we had a reference group as well. Uh, with the Swedish Traffic Government Agency, uh, Bluebeam, and um, some consultants firm as well, like Sweco. We weren't actually uh, knowing what we were doing at the moment, but everybody who we called sort of answered that call, and that just gave us a receipt that we are we're on the right track here to uh, to uh, try to to fix this for the industry. It was incredible to sit in that room with the contractors in Sweden and to hear the same conversations I had heard miles away in Los Angeles, California. And what I recognized is that although we may need to localize and our local markets are different, the problems are the same. The problems are exactly the same. We build buildings fairly similarly. In fact, I remember Jimmy telling me that um, he said, when you first sat down at the table, I thought, oh, it's, it's LA, it's Los Angeles. They're, their problems are they're not going to be anywhere applicable to ours. And he said, I almost dismissed it before you even started talking. He said, but then when you started going to the guidelines, he's like, hold on, that's exactly what we struggle with. And so for them, they got to see we're, we're really not that unique in the challenges that we face. But what I, I find is extraordinary is that they're no longer competing against each other, but that they're collaborating with each other to define these standards. It was, it was incredibly rewarding. There is nothing, nothing secretive about it, as we saw in the meeting. We were finishing each other's sentences almost. Due to this, we see a lot more transparency in the industry in Sweden, where people are not seeing themselves as weak, but brave, when they ask, could we look at this together and do this as a, as a unified force? I think that is, of course, you have the, the value of money, time, and stuff like that, but on a bigger level you have the, the transparency, the trust, uh, the honesty, uh, which has then sort of, yeah, getting, getting people talking about similar stuff. Since 2017, they've been able to create not only a PDF standard for PDF creation, but for design review, and specifically design review colors, so that they can all standardize how they're communicating on drawings. The standard has been adopted by Swedish national business standards, so this is actually something that is now a national business standard for construction. The positive feedback has been, has been great. Uh, won a couple of prizes uh, for it, which is very humbling. Uh, but it means that it's actually helping and that is sort of the, the driving force that, that keeps us, us going and, and really seeing this as really fun job uh, to, to, to have uh, and, and an honor to, to be able to represent, uh, how to say, Sweden in, in a standard like this that makes, makes a difference.
One of the most exciting things to see is since this work started in the US and then lit a spark and kind of jumped over to support what was happening in Sweden, we're now starting to see the same spark catch on in the UK. It was actually at our user conference in London, um, Fred Mills was our invited guest as a keynote speaker. And after his keynote, um, I pulled him aside and just said, Fred, I have a great story for you that you should cover. And told him about one of the sessions that was gonna be at the conference that day, and how the Swedish contractors were gonna talk about how they're creating these new standards for construction. Even with all the, the standard development that's happened in the UK, um, and I've been traveling to the UK to talk about these PDF guidelines since about 2010, there was a lot of naysayers around the PDF file format itself. A lot of people, especially those who are in the forward forefronts of what's changing the industry, don't really see PDF as futuristic or as the key to unlock the future potential. But for the contractors, it truly is that. And I was excited that Fred was open to telling the story. And luckily, uh, he did the roundtable conversation about why don't we have design review standards in the UK. And the video, if you look on YouTube, the video has well over 100,000 views. And it's the one video on the internet on YouTube that I actually like reading the comments section. Young people just coming into the industry super thirsty and hungry to understand how these parts and pieces fit together. And so telling stories like this really allows it to go from something super dry and boring as we're going to talk about standards to we're talking about things that people are doing to empower themselves to do their work better. And if you're just coming into the industry, it gives you hope. If you're in the middle of your career, it gives you passion to continue pushing. And if you're near the end of your career, seeing this type of transformation just makes you wish you had 10 years more. There are things that we compete on, clearly. So we're, we're competing to win projects for, to deliver for customers. But in terms of the way that we operate, um, there, are, there are certain things that you just you, that, that should be a non-compete. Things that apply across the whole industry. So, in the same way that you, you, you don't compete on health and safety, uh, we, we've all got a responsibility to, to make sure everybody goes home safe every day. There are other aspects of our operation that we don't need to compete on, but we could get better collectively. Uh, and that's where I think the, the, the work on the on the PDF standard really fits in nicely. It's a um, uh, it's, a, it's a great example of, of where um, getting a standard across the industry that everybody can, can buy into just helps everybody. So it's one of those rising tides that lifts all ships kind of, uh, kind of thing. And so we ha we've had the likes of Wilmot Dixon and Multiplex and uh, Sir Rob McAlpine and Mace all looking at the same, the same problem. We've been uh, testing the water with some of our, uh, our supply chains, so companies we work with, designers and, and, um, and suppliers and so on. And, um, and, and the answer has been resoundingly positive. So, so we've basically just, you know, we, we've put the standards out and said, look, we, th this, is, this is something that's been developed in Sweden and the US before that. What do you think? Could we use it? And, uh, and the feedback so far has been, has been really positive. My view is probably the quickest route would be to try and go through the, the, the PAS route. Um, and who knows from there? So, so once you've got it to a PAS standard, if it gets picked up by the, by the ISO standards organisation, then, um, then there you go, there's your global standard straight off. I'm proudest of actually getting something done that creates value for the end user. Uh, I think helping uh, a peer uh, in, in an industry that I love uh, to be more efficient uh, and, and save time um, and, and feel, how do you say, more, more efficient and more digital and being able to utilize the, the great tools that are out there in, in a better way, uh, that must be something that uh, anyone could uh, feel proud about. So yeah, that would probably be it. It's been an incredibly rewarding process. 
on a very personal level, um, many times when I was sitting in the room with engineers and architects and contractors, I, I was intimidated. These are people who've gone to school for years, who have studied their trade, and who have passed tests to be able to have those three or four little letters after their name. Um, and my story is very different. I actually am a high school dropout. Um, I have some college, but due to financial burdens, couldn't continue college. So when those doors closed for me, I really made it my mission to say, okay, the world is my classroom. My bosses, my peers, the people I interact with, our customers, they will become my professors. And so I went into those rooms not having to have all the answers or putting pressure on myself to having to solve their problems. But I went into those rooms as a listener and as a facilitator, and I made them my professors. And so as I sat in those rooms, I just listened and observed and heard what they said. And because I had gone to school to become a documentary filmmaker and a storyteller, I leveraged that skill set to help them moderate, to help them see each other's sides of the conversation. And being able to leverage my skill set, which in a room of incredibly educated, smart individuals, allowed me to show up in a way that was authentic by far, that has been absolutely the best part of my journey to date. Yeah, it's mind-boggling actually, to be honest, because every time we, we sort of meet up, it's like, did you ever think that this was going to be this big? And I was like, no, not in a million years. And especially in that short amount of time as well, uh, which means that we, we probably hit uh, a nerve that needed to uh, be sort of fixed. This is not the silver bullet in itself, but it's a great example, I think, of, uh, of how we can make that shift, and we need to keep on making that shift. So find the things that we can, uh, we can share, we can collaborate on, um, and, and take the industry on. In many, many meetings and stuff like that, when standards has been discussed before, we always uh, throw out uh, sentences like, uh, it will never work, we are too different, uh, why would they listen to us? But now looking at what the CPC did, and then what Sweden did, and now what the UK did, we, we, can't, we, we can't speak in those sentences anymore because there are similarities here. Other, otherwise, we wouldn't be able to do this. Before you say that sentence, you need to sort of just have the conversation. Start with that. It, it might not lead to anything. It doesn't matter, but a, a quick conversation, uh, just communicating and, and sharing ideas and problems and stuff like that. See where it got us uh, today.